my dear students <clears throat> today we are going to start with uh, the next concept of uh, polymers which is uh, processing of polymers or polymer processing yeah so basically uh, in this uh, processing of polymers or materials basically they are characterized by a wide variety of distinct methods or techniques so in the sense yesterday we were discussing uh different types of polymers that will be used in uh, additive manufacturing when just like a polyamide or poly proteins or uh, polyesters like that so different different uh, uh polymer processes the way i have <clears throat> the different techniques the three different uh, distinct methods based upon involving the continuous manufacture of a product having a uniform cross section which includes uh, extrusion extrusion covering film gluing and calendaring second one the technique involving the shaping of a deformable polymer that perform against a mold surface which includes the coating and rotation of molding third one is the complete filling of a mold cavity which involves casting compression molding transfer molding injection molding and uh, Uh, reaction injection means the processing of a polymer means uh, how you can uh, manufacture the polymers the synthetic the synthetic polymers or uh, the artificial polymers so the techniques are involved based upon uh, uh, the continuous manufacturing uh, which are having uniform cross section examples just like uh, extrusion or extrusion covering and the second technique what we are having is a shaping of a deformable uh, uh, polymer which uh, deformable polymer against a mold surface which includes coating and rotational molding and the third technique involves the complete filling of a mold cavity which involves uh, casting compression molding transfer molding and of course injection molding and reaction injection so these are the different headings that are which uh, we will go to discuss uh, the polymer process okay let us start with the first uh, concept first uh, technique following up a polymer processing techniques involving the continuous manufacture of product having uniform cross section so under this technique we have uh, two methods to discuss one is called wet spinning process and second one is called dry spinning process okay so let us discuss these things now So this is the diagram of a uh, wet spinning process so where <clears throat> uh we have uh, two diagrams here either you can you, you can draw any one of these diagrams you go to get a mark for this so that's why we have put r so both the diagrams is not necessary in the exam or in the test you can draw any one of these diagrams and you can now uh, explain now uh, what is this wet spinning process so this is the diagram what we are having here I will just explain this one by one. In a wet spinning process, a non-volatile solvent is used to convert the raw material into a solution. The solvent is extruded to the spinner either by simply washing it out or by chemical reaction between the polymer solution and the reagent in the spinning wheel. After extrusion, the solvent is removed in a liquid coagulation medium. Finally, the filament yarn either is immediately Both in their bobbins or is further treated for certain desired characteristics or any. So let's go back to this diagram over here. <clears throat> you can see the different uh, stages of uh, this technique. So polymer solution, and uh, we have uh, extrusion. This is what we call it as a spinneret. Spinneret basically. Uh, the polymer gets extruded out where you going to have a uniform cross section here and uh, there is a coagulation bath the coagulation bath we can see at the left side and of course on the side right side also you can see the coagulation bath the polymer solution pump it will going to pump it into the spin bath and we have a stretching is uh, the polymer will gets uh, stretched into the uh, different uh, form of uh, wires or washing and then fiber finish Dry and pop. In the sense, what we are doing here is the entire. So you can just go through this uh, <clears throat> both the diagrams. So remember the pots here, polymer solution, 
and then metering pump, and then we have spinneret, coagulation valve, and then it will be drawn and it will be wounded, which is the form of a winding. So where the polymer is uh, processed by in the form of a to an extrusion, and where we are going to have a uniform concentration. So this is the diagram. So we we'll just go through once again. In wet spinning, a non-volatile solvent is used to convert the raw material into a solution. So here, the polymer solution, the raw material, <coughs> is converted into a polymer solution using a non-volatile liquid or non-volatile solvent. The solvent is extruded through the spinneret either by simply washing it out or by chemical reaction between chemical solution and the reagent in the spinning form. And after extrusion, the solvent is removed in the liquid coagulation medium. So liquid coagulation medium is here and it is going to remove the solvent. And then finally, the filament yarn either is immediately wound into the bobbins or is further treated for certain desired characteristics. In the sense, if you want uh, uh, fiber finishing or drying, whatever thing, this is uh, what we call it as <coughs> the remaining processes where we have uh, further treatments, what we call it as to be washed in a wash pan or it might be fiber finishing with a spray, uh, water spraying and drain with the heated drum rooms like that. So, different, different uh, uh, treatments, post treatments after the processing will be required for the different. Uh, applications and the end use, so you can have uh, uh, these treatments, but if not required directly, you can uh, get into the thing. This is what we call it as wet spinning. <coughs> this wet spinning uh, can be used in the production of uh, aramide, uh, lyocell, PVC, uh, vineyard, PVA, and uh, viscose rayon, spandex, acrylic, and uh, monacrylic fibers. So here, the different uh, polymers, different types of polymers, what you can obtain from uh, this method, the wet spinning method is, uh, is the, what we are listed out. And when it comes to the advantages, the lower tones can be, oh, sorry, larger tones can be handled. And uh, there's a one main advantage of this type of uh, technique or a process. And uh, the major disadvantage is a slow, it is very slow. So in order to process uh, uh, 70 yards of speed, you can see 70 to 150 yards per minute. Okay, washing to remove impurities, you require solvent and chemical recovery. So these are all the major disadvantages of uh, the wet spinning. The second one is the dry spinning process. This is the diagram of a uh, dry spinning process mode here. Yeah? Of course, uh, again, we have uh, two different diagrams. Of course, you can use any one of these diagrams for uh, uh, in the exam or in the test. Uh, and of course, we need to explain these things. So dry spinning, yeah, we'll just explain. Just uh, look at this diagram, what are the different uh, uh, parts of this dry spinning over here, polymer solution. In the red, warm air, warm air. There it was a coagulation medium, that's why it is called a bit spinning. So here we have a warm air. That is a difference what you can make. Rest of things will remain the same. So in the case of a bit spinning, so we have a coagulation medium. If I go back here, coagulation bath. Okay, so where uh, the extrusion solvent is removed in the liquid coagulation medium. But in the case of a dry spinning, that uh, solvent will be removed by causing the warm air. So there is a difference between those uh, wet spinning and uh, dry spinning process. And the same thing here also. So we have uh, polymer solution, spinneret, uh, air outlet, heating jacket. So these are the, some of the parts you can see over here. The operation chamber, air inlet, element winding. So this is uh, how we can uh, process uh, uh, the polymers by using the dry spinning. Let's uh, understand uh, the process over here. A dry spinning is used for polymers that need to be dissolved in a solvent. Solvent spinning are usually are used by 30% of the fiber. The process is like this. In dry spinning, 
A volatile solvent is used to dissolve the raw material and form a salutation. The solution is purified by a filter. The solution is extruded to a spinneret into a warm air chamber where solvent evaporates, solidifying the fine film. Finally, the filament yawn either is immediately wound into a bobbins or is further treated for certain desired characteristics and changes. The procedure remains the same over here with respect to the wet spinning process. But only thing here, the solvent, what uh, we're going to get, so in the case of a wet spinning, has been uh, removed in the coagulation box in the case of a wet spinning process. But in the case of a dry spinning process, this uh, solvent has been uh, removed. It is being okay or uh, still removed. Means it is, solvent gets evaporated once it is processed through the warm air chamber. So, <clears throat> and the solution is extruded from the spinneret in the warm air chamber where solvent evaporates, solidifying the fine film. In the sense, solvent gets evaporated as it passes through the warm air, whereas the solidifying the fine film. And finally, the filament yarn either is immediately wound onto the bobbins or is further treated for desired characteristics or changes. This is what uh, <coughs> the wet spinning and dry spinning, right? So, this uh, dry spinning uh, is also used for uh, production of acetate, uh, triacetate, and some acrylic, uh, mod acrylic, acrylic, and mod acrylic spandex and uh, vinyl. Fibers. So this is uh, <clears throat> the different uh, polymers which can be processed using uh, the dry spinning process. The advantages here is the yarn does not require any purification. So because it is not being uh, subjected for any uh, chemical treatment over here, directly it can uh, no purification is required over here. And disadvantages coming here is. Flammable solvent are hazard, solvent recovery, and it is also slow. Speed is also one of the major factors uh, uh, in both uh, spinning processes, but spinning or dry spinning. So when you just look at that, so there it was 70 to 100, and here it is 200 to 400. And uh, apart from uh, the advantage, there are uh, so many disadvantages to this uh, type of uh, uh, processes. Okay, so these are the two different uh, <clears throat> processes. What I wanted to discuss with respect to uh, the polymers processing techniques involved in continuous manufacture of products having uniform surface. It's very important from the extension point of view. Anyone, either wet spinning or dry spinning, or sometimes they may ask you to compare wet spinning process and dry spinning. Let us proceed for the next one here. Of course, I think I discussed this biopolymers in the yesterday's class. I just quickly I will just go through this. So biopolymers are uh, one which is uh, developed from living beings and are biodegradable. And uh, this, uh, these are the chemical compounds that is regarded as most organic compound in the ecosystems. And uh, they are present on earth for billions of years and is rolled up in the plastic. So just quickly I will just go through. Some of the examples of uh, biopolymers are proteins, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, lipids, nucleic acids, and peptides, and polysaccharides, as uh, uh, glycogen, starch, and cellulose. I'll just brush it up because yesterday I just discussed this in detail in the yesterday's class. And of course, we have uh, uh, classification of biopolymers. Uh, there are four types of biopolymers. They are uh, Sugar based biopolymers, starch based biopolymers, synthetic material based biopolymers, and cellulose based biopolymers. The sugar based biopolymers or starch or sucrose is used as input for manufacturing the polyhydroxyglutide. Sugar based polymers can be produced by growing injection, vacuum, forming, and extrusion. Lactic acid polymers are created from milk sugar that is extracted from potatoes. Means wheat and sugar beet. Polyactides are uh, resistant to water and can be manufactured by methods like vacuum forming, blowing, and injection. So, this is uh, what uh, sugar based biopolymers. 
and second type is uh, not based biopolymers acts as a natural polymer or is a natural polymer and it can be obtained from wheat uh, tapioca maize and potato the materials stored in tissues of plants as one way of carbohydrates it is composed of a glucose and can be obtained from the starch this polymer is most is not present in the animal tissue it can be found in vegetables like uh, tapioca corn wheat and potato so this is the this starch based uh, biopolymer and the third type is uh, biopolymers based on synthetic materials Synthetic compounds that are obtained from petroleum can also be used for making biodegradable polymers, uh, such as aliphatic aromatic uh, copolyesters. Means biopolymers which we can be obtained or can also be obtained from uh, the products what you are going to obtain from the petroleum. This is what the example they have shown here: aliphatic aromatic copolyesters. so these polymers are uh, manufactured from synthetic component compounds they are completely composed and biodegradable this is uh, the third category of uh, the biopolymers and the fourth one is cellulose based biopolymers these are used for uh, packing cigarettes pdas and confectionery this polymer is composed of uh, glucose and is uh, the primary constituent of plant cellular walls it is obtained from natural resources like cotton wood wheat and corn the production of biopolymer may be done either from animal products or agricultural plants so this uh, just i want to rush to the concept of biopolymer and coming to the this is of biopolymers these polymers play an essential role in nature they are extremely useful in performing functions like storage of energy preservation and transmittance of genetic information and cellular information so when you look at uh, the uses because of uh, DNA or RNA or cellulose or starch. So the biopolymers they are extremely useful in performing functions like the storage of energy, preservation and transmittance of genetic information and cellular information. The DNA and RNA. But they are still lost. Let us quickly just move over that sugar-based polymers such as the polyactyls naturally degenerate in human body. without producing any harmful side effects this reason why they are used for medical purpose medical purpose polyactyls are commonly used for surgical implants short waist biopolymers can be used for creating conventional plastics by extruding and injection molding biopolymers based on synthetics are used to manufacture substrate mats cellulose based biopolymers such as a cell phone uh, cellophones or cellophane are used for packaging materials and these chemical compounds can be used to make a thin uh, wrapping films food sprays and pellets for sending fragile food species so when you look at uh, <coughs> the uses of biopolymers so day to day life we will see the packaging of cigarettes or cereals or confectionery and uh, uh, cellophane and uh, we can use uh, uh, food trays there are so many applications you can see in medical purposes also and surgical implants so it has got a very wide application now uh, in our day to day life the biopolymers apart from uh, the polymers the biopolymers they also have their own applications and applications next comes <coughs> the second 
processing of polymers the second method of processing of polymers so where you will going to have uh, the polymer which will be molded into a required shape so this can fill the mold cavity and you can uh, import the required shape for this in this category we have uh, certain uh, processes so those processes are plastic molding so we have a very important uh, concept of plastic molding here basically <clears throat> plastic molding is the process of uh, shaping plastic using a rigid frame or a mold the techniques allows for the creation of objects of all shapes and sizes with huge design flexibility for both simple and highly complex designs a popular manufacturing option plastic molding techniques are responsible for many car parts containers signs and other high volume items so the name itself indicates it is a molding of a plastic so process name is given as a plastic molding where shaping a plastic using a rigid frame or a mold so you can from this method you can create an object of all shapes and sizes it has got a wide range of varieties so either in the form of a shapes or in the form of a size and also huge design flexibility for both simple and highly complex design this is very important so why plastic molding is so important and uh, so critical in uh, manufacture of polymers because it will provide flexibility design flexibility huge design flexibility where you can uh, create a uh, objects of any shapes all shapes and sizes all shapes and sizes with a huge design flexibility for both simple and highly complex hence this is the most popular uh, uh, polymer processing technique over here yeah. okay <clears throat> a popular manufacturing option plastic molding techniques are responsible for many car parts containers signs and other high volume items some of the applications what they are showing you over here is the plastic molding that they, they are used in the manufacture of uh, um, car parts containers signs and other high volume items is the plastic molding the technique for plastic molding or plastic molding techniques we can say the uh, underlying concept of plastic molding is placing liquid polymer into a hollow mold so that the polymer can take its shape often with various ranges of pressure and heat the basic concept what we are uh, basic principle you can say so when you place a liquid polymer liquid polymer into a hollow mold so that the polymer can take its shape often with the various ranges of pressure and heat rate in the sense so when a polymer is heated to a melting means it is been heated to a liquid state and it is been poured into a hollow mold so that it can shape the shape of you can shape you can means you can take the shape of the mold and of course you can apply different uh, pressure and heat required and finally you can go to get uh, the complement of the required shape there are different plastic molding techniques available to accomplish this including rotational molding injection molding blow molding compression molding to name a few each technique has its benefits and is best suited for creation of in the sense plastic moldings there are uh, different uh, techniques are available for us just like a rotational molding or injection molding or blow molding and uh, compression molding uh, these are a few things that's what we are listing out here and each technique has their own merits and demerits and these techniques are suited for a specific items yes. Uh, as we go forward, we are going to know which item can be used for different items, which methods, and how uh, these methods are uh, useful for making uh, such kind of uh, 
objects like that. We just uh, go ahead for that. Right? So this is uh, just a uh, basic principle behind uh, the plastic molding technique. I'm going to start with the first one, <clears throat> rotational mode. It consists of uh, four separate operations. First one is uh, preparing the mold. Second one, heating and fusion. Third one, cooling the mold. And fifth one, unloading and demold. These the process, these steps will uh, remain the same for almost all the plastic molding techniques. So plastic molding uh, techniques, okay. And uh, one of this uh, method, uh, what we call it as a rotational molding, it has got its own advantages and it can be used for uh, purposes. And uh, it consists of these four steps, folding the mold, heating and fusion, folding time. Just uh, go into these steps and what are these steps and uh, what is necessary. Let's start with the first one <coughs> preparing the mold. The process begins with filling a halo mold with a predetermined quantity of polymer powder or a resin. The powder can be pre compounded to a desired color. More often than not, the powder resin is polyethylene. Although other compounds such as polyvinyl chloride and nylon can also be used, the oval is preheated by convection conduction to a temperature range around 500 Fahrenheit to 700 Fahrenheit, depending on the polymer used. When the powder is loaded into the mold, it is closed, locked, and loaded in force. This is the uh, what we have with the preparation of the mold. So here, the polymer is in the form of a powder or a resin. And the process begins with uh, filling the halo mold with a predetermined quantity, so how much amount of uh, polymer, so what is it, uh, that needs to be filled in the mold cavity. So it depends upon what is the uh, volume or size of the product that needs to be manufactured. So, material, of course, powder can be pre compounded into the desired color. You can, when you want to get a different colors, and you can just uh, compound it with a different uh, compound, and, uh, and uh, you can just put it, depending upon which type of color you want, uh, correspondingly, you might be having the, the compound, and that can be blended or it might be chemically it has been compounded and it is thin you can uh, get a different colors. Generally we use uh, polyethylene powder resin as uh, the material for the plastic but of course other polyvinyl chloride and nylons can also be used. In a sense uh, this type of uh, rotational method uh, is best suited for polyethylene resins. And apart from that, uh, we can also have uh, another two polymers, which is the polyvinyl chloride PVC and nylon. That can also be used. So here, the woven is preheated by convection and conduction, and of course, in some cases, radiation also. And uh, we are heating, or we are preheating it into a temperature of 260 degrees centigrade to 370 degrees. So here we are having a the oven which will be heated for 260 to 370 degrees centigrade and depending upon what type of polymer you are using. So that is depending upon polyethylene or the polyvinyl chloride or nylon, depending upon that which material you are using that can be molded and it can be loaded into the mold, the powder is loaded into the mold and locked and loaded into the mold. This is uh, the first step in the rotation. Now the second step is heating and fusion. Inside the oven, the mold is biaxially rotated, rotated around two axes biaxially 
as the polymer melts and coats the inside the mold. The rotation speed is slow, less than 20 rotations per minute. The process is not solution. During this phase of rotational molding process, timing is critical. If the mold spends too much time inside the mold, the polymer will degrade. This will reduce its impact time. If it spends too little time inside the oven, melting of the polymer will be incomplete and will be not fully coalescence in the mold cavity, creating large bubbles in the oven. So, most important thing here is <clears throat> once it has been uh, put it into the oven and the oven is created for 260 uh, degrees already in the degree. Okay. And later, uh, if you are having the uh, loaded into the oven, the oven is uh, inside the oven, the mold is axially rotated. The mold where you have mold uh, the powder or resin, it has been rotated biaxially, biaxially in the sense two different axes in the x axis as well as in the y axis. As the polymer melts and it coats the inside of the mold, so it has been as it has been rotated in two different uh, axis direction of axis, the polymer gets melted and it will get stick and it will get coats the inside of the mold. This is mold cavity will get coats. But one thing what you're supposed to remember here is the rotation speed is slow. And it is in order of 20 rotations per minute. And the process is not centrifugal. Centrifugal means you can rotate at a very high speed. But the speed is very slow. Rotational speed is very slow. So at around 20 minutes per second. So <clears throat> the process is not a centrifugal. And uh, another important thing you have to remember in this case is the time, the rotational time, the processing time. Processing time is very, very critical over here. Why? Because if the mold spends too much inside the mover, the polymer will degrade. This will reduce its impact strength. If it spends too little time inside the mover, melting of the polymer will be incomplete and will not fully coalescence in the mold gap. What it is, you go into the mold, just uh, uh, speak to the molding wall or mold cavity and because of that it can be create a large bubbles in the oven. The melting is not proper and hence you cannot just uh, uh, adhere, you cannot get stick to the molding wall and creating the large bubbles in the oven. So this is uh, the second step in rotational molding. And the third step is cooling the molding. After melting, after the melting has been consolidated to the desired level and the timing is right, the mold is removed from the oven and cooled. <clears throat> the cooling of mold is typically done with air, by fan, water or sometimes a combination of both. Cooling allows the polymer to solidify to the desired shape and still slightly so that it can be handled by the operator and removed from the mold. Cooling time can typically be measured in tens of minutes. It is important that the cooling rate can, cooling rate be carefully measured because rapid cooling causes the polymer to shrink too fast and warps. So the third step is the cooling the mold. Once the melting has consolidated to the desired level and uh, the rotational time, the processing time is right. We are going to remove the mold from the oven and we are going to cool. Uh, cooling can be done either by fan, by the dry air, or sometimes water, or by the combination of both. So this cooling allows the polymer to solidify to the desired shape and shrink slightly so that it can then be handled by the operator and removed from the In the sense, the purpose of cooling is to make the polymer to get solidified into a desired shape and it gets shrink so that the operator can handle it and he can remove it. 
The cooling time can be typically measured in terms of uh, minutes. It is important that the cooling rate uh, be carefully measured because uh, rapid cooling causes the polymer to shrink too fast and warps the water. And the last step here is unloading and demolding. When it is when it has cooled sufficiently to be handled and the polymer can retain its shape. The mold is opened and the pot is removed. The molding process can then be repeated by adding the polymer powder. Hence, once you ensure the proper cooling and the proper cooling time has been attained, the polymer can retain its shape. The mold is opened and the pot is removed. The molding process can then be repeated by adding the pot. So this is what. Uh, the rotational molding technique where uh, you are going to uh, prepare the mold, going to heat and freeze it, and then you are going to cool it, and then loading and uh, demolding. This is another one important uh, uh, question from the examination point of view for the rotational molding. Okay. I may, I will just stop at this point because the time is running out for me and I will just uh, uh, come back to you and I will just uh, Hello, so can you please, hello, students can you please un uh, unmute, you can have any clarifications, any doubts you can discuss. You can unmute and you can have any clarifications, any doubts, you can discuss. Anybody is there? Anybody can unmute? Okay, so we will uh, start uh, the second session at uh, 11.50, okay, so where uh, I will go to discuss uh, some more uh, points over there, so some more techniques and we will go to complete the procedure of uh, polymers, okay, so any clarifications you can uh, talk to me later, okay.